So as most of you know, fighter number five for the Fighter's Pass just got revealed and it's Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Who saw that one coming? I don't think they're gonna end it on Fire Emblem Three Houses with Byleth or anything. Like that, that would be pretty underwhelming if I'm being honest. People are pretty vocal about their inclusion, to say the least. So today I thought we could take a look at the footage from the Direct to see if Byleth is going to be the next Joker or the next Ganondorf. Before we begin, try to keep in mind that this footage may not be finalized. Sakurai told us it was recorded in November, so I'm not going to do a full breakdown on frame data and theorycraft every hitbox and animation into combos or whatever. This is just going to be a generalized look of how Byleth is likely to play overall. Will Byleth be winning 2020 S tiers on his own, or be relegated to the status of Wi-Fi warrior for life? Let's get into it and find out. To begin, let's take a look at Byleth's basic movement options. The CPU match Sakurai plays gives us an okay look at how Byleth moves, but I don't really think there's much to write home about here. Their jump and roll both seem fairly average, although the roll does go quite low to the ground, which could help you low profile certain punishes if your opponent goes for a read with a high hitbox. Otherwise, pretty standard stuff. And the last thing we get a quick look at is two of Byleth's throws. We see up throw, and it looks like this could be a decent combo starter. At low percents, this is probably what you're gonna be going for if you do manage to get a grab with your short range. Then we see back throw during the presentation, and it's pretty hard to tell because they were only at mid percents, but the animation kinda makes it look like it could be a kill throw similar to Banjo's. We don't see down throw, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's also some sort of combo throw similar to other Fire Emblem characters because that seems to be the recurring theme. Their aerial speed is fine, but it may be hard to get away from your opponent if they're juggling you from below. More on that a bit later, but hey, at least you won't be waiting through molasses every time you're in the air like King Dedede. <laughs> and when it comes to their grounded move speed? Well, Sakurai said that Byleth's mobility is a bit better than Robin's. Sadly, we don't know exactly what he was referring to by saying this, but considering how Robin has a crazy slow walk and even slower run, it's not saying much to best them in either of these categories. Don't expect to be zipping around all over the stage as Byleth because they are definitely going to be slow. Slow characters tend to be less competitive in most cases, so it's not a great first impression, but we'll give Byleth more of a chance than that. Let's move on to some of their actual attacks and see what sort of compensation Byleth gets for what they lack in mobility. First up is their normals. I'll start with the move I have the least to say about being dash attack. Dash attack is a slow, hard commitment with your sword that's pretty laggy, but has a decent sized hitbox. I wouldn't really recommend using it unless you're catching someone air dodging away from you, but even in that case, most of your other moves probably have the range to deal with them better. Looking at the rest of Byleth's kit, there's usually a better option for most scenarios, so the high risk and small reward of dash attack usually won't be worth it. Definitely not the move you want to be using too often. Then there's Jab. Jab is a standard 3 hit combo, where it uses the whip as the rapid jab to cover a large space in front of you. Jab has a really good range to it, and it may end up being a good option for getting people away from you. This will be your fastest move by far, but even still it looks like it's a lot slower than most other characters. Although it won't lead to much, it may be a good way to desperately get someone away from your shield, but I don't see it being used too too often. Forward Tilt is next, and it's similar in look to other Fire Emblem characters, so it's probably a good move, but not the greatest. It seems to have a better range than most other swords, but it also has a decently long startup. This is the kind of thing that could change before release, but I can't really see this getting much use outside of ledge trapping. Then again, if side special is too slow, you could probably catch people landing in front of you with it, so who knows? Not bad, but not great either. Next we have Up Tilt, which seems like a pretty good anti-air. As long as your opponent doesn't have a giant disjoint they're slamming into your skull. It hits in front of you decently well too, which is always a plus. From looking at the footage, it seems like most times you'd just rather go for up smash. It hits in front of you as well, and it has a bigger hitbox that lasts longer with more knockback, so I'm not seeing a whole lot of potential here. Moving on, we have down tilt, which I think is probably the best tilt at buy list disposal. It has a low profile, seems to be a decent combo starter from the knockback angle, a good amount of range, and probably good for poking on people's shields. The fact that your sword can turn into a whip and gain that extra range really helps this move out. So this looks like it'll be a main neutral tool of Byleth. 
Keep on tickling those toes until something happens, boys. And that's it for Byless Normals, which uh, I guess are pretty underwhelming to say the least, but I don't think that they're the part of the moveset that's going to be seeing the most use anyway. Hopefully Down Tilt will have enough versatility with the rest of their kit to make it worth it in the end, but if not, Byleth definitely still has some tricks up their sleeve. But before we get into all the specials, let's take a quick look at the smash attacks. Here's the up smash I was talking about, and as you can see, it pretty much beats out up tilt in every single way. Sure, it's a harder commitment than up tilt is, but it has a good hitbox in front of you to scoop opponents up into the multi-hit, with the long disjoint on top too, so the potential to anti-air is really good. Probably the most useful smash attack, and although it's hard to tell at the moment, this could potentially be Byleth's best out of shield option. I'd keep my eyes on this one if I were you. Now let's take a look at forward smash. It has a long range strike with the lance that can be tilted up or down for extra versatility and even has a tipper on the end. You can hit grounded opponents with the downwards tilt, so I don't think it's unrealistic to say that it might be a good two frame option when your opponent goes to grab the ledge. It does a lot less damage and knockback if you don't hit with the blade, so you have to be really careful with your spacing if you're going to go for this one. It has a long startup too, so if your opponent sees it coming, you'll be in for a hard punish almost every time. Probably not your best option in most scenarios, but if you can nail the spacing on it, you'll be rewarded for sure. And then there's down smash. Oh boy, Byleth takes their sweet time to swing the axe to both sides of them on the ground. This one has a lot of lag and is probably not ever useful enough to consider using. The knockback is pretty high, and because forward smash won't really do much to enemies that are too close to you, if you're fishing for a kill against someone, down smash may work if they're getting up close and personal. I wouldn't really rely on this one though, having enough time for a punish this hard usually doesn't happen, but if you feel you got the time, go ahead. So the smash attacks seem unreliable once again. Byleth is not impressing me so far, but I guess we'll have to take a look at the special moves and see if that changes. And to start things off, side special is huge! Wow! Once again, this is another move with a pretty long startup, but the size of the attack might make up for it pretty well. The most important part of this move is the shape of the hitbox. It glides along the ground to hit shorter opponents as well as cover a good amount diagonal space in front of you. That means there's a lot of scenarios where you could catch people off guard with this one. The biggest issue with this move is if it gets shielded it does almost no shield damage, but that's a theme that carries out through most of Byleth's kit. A bit concerning, yes, and just the fact that most of these moves are gigantic and take so long to start up means they probably will be shielded. So. Byleth bad character confirmed? Maybe, we'll just have to wait and see. This move is gigantic and if someone gets hit by it, they'll be taking a lot of damage for it. If there's any kind of consistent setup from a throw or an aerial or a tilt or anything into this move, that'll help Byleth out a lot. Next we have up special, which is the special sauce on the Byleth Supreme Pizza, baby. This is another move that hits slightly in front of you to scoop them up into the main hit, which is so good for a move like this. Then, at higher percents, you'll be able to spike opponents with it. Edgeguarding Byleth will be extremely scary when this is their main recovery option and their main offensive option at the same time. In general, you will not want to be above Byleth if you're off stage. This is really good for the Byleth player, because the best way to recover an ultimate tends to be going low and then snapping up to the ledge. So if your opponent is anywhere above you, you can just up B them and reverse edgeguard them for free. They also mention that it hits your opponent upwards until they're at a certain percent, so you won't be able to spike people at zero. But the way they word this makes it seem like the percentage differs between all the characters. Maybe it's based on a character's weight, but it's pretty much impossible to tell at this point. Either way, the startup is relatively quick, the tether is a good length, and the reverse edgeguard potential is gnarly. This is a great move for Byleth. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have down special. This move is slow. If Sakurai made the point to compare this move to Falcon Punch, then we already know it's not good. This move is actually even slower than Falcon Punch. It's a big hatchet man swing with your axe that takes forever. You do get super armor with it, and you can turn it around or drop through platforms, but the most you're ever going to get with this move is a hard read to break someone's shield. Cool if you're into that kind of thing and it'll make for some great Twitter clips, but overall not very competitive. 
Finally, we have Neutral Special. You charge an arrow with your bow, and you can let it go at either half or full strength and increase the power. If you want to cancel out of it before you've charged halfway, you can hit shield, but if you end up going for the full charge, you can't cancel out of it at all. It's a big commitment and it takes a long time to charge, so expect this one to get shielded a lot. The most use you'll probably get out of it is from some edge guarding cases where people don't air dodge properly, but even then you might be better off just running off stage and trying to up B them or something. It's a big commitment that likely won't work out very often, but at least the animation's nice, right? And that's the specials! Overall better than the tilts and the smash attacks, but that's not really saying too much. Let's take a look at the final piece of the puzzle being the aerials, and see what Byleth can really do. Forward air and back air are pretty much the same move, so I'll talk about them both at the same time. They're a big slap forward or backwards with the lance. They've got good range, but are pretty slow like most of Byleth's moves. I think this will probably be your best neutral tool for spacing and keeping people away from you. Sadly, it won't be hitting many short characters, and anyone who's quick enough will probably just run circles around you before you can get it out. But if you're really going to try to keep them out, this is probably your best bet. Next is up air, which is a similar move to up smash, just in the air. It's a disjointed multi-hit with a lot of good range. Once again, great to hit people above you. It seems like Byleth is really going to want to try to keep their opponents above them in order to keep combos going and prevent them from landing, but it remains to be seen if that's going to be an easy task. Neutral air is similar to Pit or Ivysaur. You spin your bow around in a circle as a multi-hit. It seems like a good combo tool, but it also looks like the range is pretty small on it, so that could really hinder the move's potential. Hopefully there'll be some throws that lead into this neutral air so you can set up a drag down multi-hit combo, but once again, it's hard to tell. I would say the potential is there, but it's impossible to know if anything will lead into it yet. And finally, there's down air. This move has been the talk of the town ever since it broke that CPU's shield in Sakurai's presentation. I think this has blown a little bit out of proportion. You can see that the CPU was holding shield for quite a while. It looks like it's at about half strength, so that would put this move similar to a Ganondorf or other heavy characters down air, so it's not that impressive if you really think about it. Don't get me wrong, it is super strong and has a good spike to it, but it's just so slow and laggy that it's going to be hard to actually connect with it. Once again, you're probably better off going for the spike on your up B instead. But, if you do get the chance to land on someone's shield, it's probably worth taking it. And... That's it! We've officially gone over everything we've seen from Byleth in the presentation. Well, except for these two taunts, which are Whippy Dippy Bad and Swingy Dingy Bad. So the general impression I get from all this footage is that Byleth is going to be super slow. It's hard to tell if the reward for all these slow moves is going to be worth it in the end, when you could just play a faster character, but I suppose only time will tell at this point. We're less than a week away from Byleth's release, so we'll be able to look at all this stuff ourselves in no time. I think Byleth actually does look a lot worse than all the other DLC characters that we got, but like I said, it feels like he's just gonna try to throw the opponent up into the air and keep them there for as long as he can. And if that doesn't work out and you have a Pikachu that runs back and forth in and out of your hitboxes over and over again, I think you're gonna have a pretty bad time. When a character is this slow to move around and all their moves come out this slow, it seems like it's gonna be pretty tough to make work. But I welcome the challenge and I'll be playing my fair share of Byleth upon their release. Thanks for watching this video guys, it took quite a bit of work and I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like or share it with a friend. Let me know down below in the comments if you're excited to play Byleth or if you're disappointed at the inclusion. It's okay to love them and it's okay to not love them as long as we're all nice to each other about it. That's the moral of the story, we're all just here to play Smash Brothers so let's be friends, okay? Feel free to come by my streams, Stabilize Sundays happens Sunday nights at 7pm Eastern. We're currently doing a World of Light Nuzlocke and that's been a lot of fun so far. Chat's really loving it, so I hope to see you guys there. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!